start recording. Okie dokie. So, um, where we left off, we had just got the um, uh, cursor working with uh, mouse control. And the way we'd done that is we'd sort of fudged the... Um, fudged the way that we determine where we are uh, and just used the line spacing in the update um, and one thing we realized is that the way we've structured this down here with label draw item um, and the way that draw item sort of calls into label like this is not uh, this is not a particularly nice way of structuring things, sort of um, typically you want to make things sort of as, as leafy as possible is how I would describe it. Um, so if uh, like if we sort of try and draw out what we've got here, you know, we've got uh, say, uh, and I'll just do one of them like checkbox. And then, you know, we've got, um, like, uh, label. And um, the way we've got it now is, it's like, draw item is just like our, our private thing. And all that really does is just tax on the uh, little uh, cursor that we use. And uh, we're doing basically this and really what we want to do is more like um, something like this where where this is like a leaf and so that's sort of the um, pattern that uh, we want to go for so this is going to be basically a sort of a a refactoring redesign sort of exercise um, like you know it's, it, we, we haven't touched this code for a while um, you know we've only done one pass on how this is laid out and now we, now we are in a position to like do another pass on it to make it sort of nicer so we don't have this sort of lump sitting in our code uh, there is one other thing that I want us to think about and that is like doing this over the whole um, UI system um, and that's obviously a much bigger project but um, you know we're starting to have to move some of the layout stuff like you know we need to know the position and the size of the thing we're about to draw in both uh, the UI draw and in um, UI update and so just one thing to think about uh, that we're not going to touch today but because uh, it requires some finagling um, is that the way this system is split it's doing uh, virtual calls um, and so that, that that virtual call is like the jump instruction that decides what to do but wherever you've got a virtual call, you can always um, like uh, turn that into an if statement. So we could just say there's only one UI system class and it does drawing and updating based on a boolean and we just if inside it. And that way we get like a, a straight line code flow. So rather than having, you know, rather than having the code laid out in such a way that like label up here and we end up with something like layout label or layout item that tells us the you know layout and then we have to return the layout and then we have to you know call it in here and call it in here and you know we've got different versions of label that you know do slightly different things whereas it might be nicer just to be like well this is the drawing one so we turn off the couple of updating things like we turn off for example all of this stuff if it's an update and then you know if it's uh, sorry if it's a draw and if it's an update you know we turn off uh, maybe some of these things 
on a Um, well, so not quite, but I do suspect that, um, like, rather than doing the virtual call, and we were, we were looking at how it did a virtual call, um, and in fact, I might just run it just so I can get that up and look at it. If I can go there, get rid of that, and then stick a breakpoint there and run it a um, couple of times, and then do disassembly. So what we determined was, you know, the virtual call is, you know, we've got the um, RSI, RSI. Uh, RSI to RCX, where is RSI? RSI is UI, so and RCX UI comes in as a parameter. Yes. So we move it to RCI RSI. Um we move it RSI into RCX and do whatever oh, we're using that as a parameter again, that's fine. Um yeah, okay, and then so um what we're doing is we're doing a move, a move, and a call. Uh, and this call is obviously a uh, a branch instruction, effectively. Um, well, it uh, is a, is the sort of thing that the branch table is going to look up, but you know it's indirected by whatever's in that pointer. So a direct call is maybe going to be a little bit cheaper. Uh, so basically what you're doing is you're trading this call instruction for a few, um, you know, just simple branch instructions. So, um, you know, uh, so see, see these calls here that call directly into the function. So that that's obviously a very predictable branch just to begin with, um, whereas the virtual call less so. And um, <clears throat> then you've got this like jump, um, J A E. I uh, can't remember what the A is, um, but yeah, is is a jump if uh, this comparison is equal or whatever. Um, Exactly, um, and so the thought may even be, you know, are you are you read only? Because that's really our concern. This uh, sort of the reason we did this is like we don't want to be writing into um, uh, focus, for example, within the drawing system because um, we don't we we can't change things. If we don't have a valid sort of up, if we don't have an update context, we can't change things uh, in in uh, River City uh, networking parlance, um, <clears throat> and so that's sort of the thing. It's like it's more more a case of are you networked or not, and um, so basically to put it another way, we need a way of running like, uh, and and this is yeah, and this is more of a um, this is closer to a um, the in GUI way of doing it and that is you know in when you call main menu with you know some update context you start building up a um, a uh, display list of what you're about to draw and so you so when you get to here exactly um, when you get to here, it's going to look like something, you know, if UI dot um, draw list is still valid or whatever. Um, oh, sorry, if not, then 
main menu fake or uh, read only UI text or something something like that you know read only and then and then it's like uh, draw display list UI something you know something along these lines so that we can run and run a quote unquote update um, but without actually changing anything and then get a display list that way because uh, that was the problem that we were designing against is um, the fact that we have to uh, be able to draw it without a update an actual update having occurred um, for network reasons and so that may you know the way we structure it that may be like a waste of um, <clears throat> uh, re uh, like the like sometimes you might want to do like a fast update and you don't bother building the draw list and sometimes you might want to do the read and the update so build the draw list without uh, letting any input changes actually occur um, and so that's a thing we could work towards and the only sort of real difference is we're trading these um, uh, virtual calls for if statements And there's, the performance implications of that are um, not that in... Well, um, oh, actually, you know what? Like, um, uh, it's hard to say. I think what you'll find is like, because every one of these is a virtual call, you know, you're doing like an if state, effectively like you're doing one branch per one of these um, in this code. Whereas if you move the if statement into like, say we moved it into item, um, you'd then be doing uh, an if statement, you'd be moving the in if statement into the item uh, call, but then it might become more predictable, maybe, because you're calling into that function multiple times. And so it's just that one if statement that needs to be predicted so it's it's probably not a huge deal and obviously it's ui so really really no one cares uh, it's not going to be slow enough that anyone really cares but it's sort of interesting to think about but anyway the um the main thing that is tricky about that is that we would have to basically uh we wouldn't have to but we kind of do because we need a way of clearing it we would have to um, probably implement our own version of Sprite Batch. The problem. The problem is, um, we so basically we, we might do updates that don't end up getting drawn. I mean, we don't have to actually really, I suppose. Yeah, I mean, I guess that forces us to do it in such a way that we don't have to, um, that, sorry, that forces us to do the work required to um, uh, be efficient, like don't build up sprite batches that you're not going to use. Uh, it just, that obviously adds a little bit of complication to the code, but then it saves us re-implementing sprite batch. Um, So basically, basically the issue is, you know, if we build up a sprite batch that we don't actually need to draw out to the screen, a sprite batch provides no way of um, clearing it. Uh, like it just expects you to call end and for it to um, happen. Uh, here's flush batch. Um, like we, we could just copy, we could just copy paste this whole class and just add a function that does num sprites equals zero and it's like ah oh, look we cleared it and we can start from getting like this has always been the problem with sprite batches it's like it's basically a, a draw list and sometimes you really want to just treat it as a list rather than sort of this um uh sort of half list half batch kind of mess um Oh yeah, we we could just reflect and find that field and just clear it. Like, we could be really hacky about it. Um, so anyway, the, uh, 
I was about to say exactly exactly that, and that is we may actually want to um, replace sprite batch for various reasons, uh, such as the fact that you know we might want to do um, text formatting, for example, like if we want um, to be able to in say insert tags into the string that um, change the color of the text halfway through a line or something, or add bold or something like that. That's one reason we'd have to do something custom. Um, another, like, and things, uh, word wrap is, uh, you can do it with or without Sprite Batch, I guess. Um, but that's sort of uh, where you'd want to go. Uh, there was an actual, oh yes, um, back when we were talking about doing, rather than doing um, this uh, next ID thing um, and, and fix ID, Back when we were talking about doing it the uh, imgui way or dear imgui way, with the like hashtag thing at the end, um, you know, if you pass that string to sprite batch, either either you have to do a garbagey thing or a string buildery thing and make a copy of it, but it would be nicer if you could just get sprite, uh, you know, this the draw string of sprite batch just to, oh, I've run into some hashtag characters, just stop processing. Um, rather than you know having it do it the other way um anyway so that's sort of a that's sort of some thoughts about where you might go with this in the future um whether we're really happy about having like we've still got one two three like basically declarations here and then um you know four and then Five, whereas you know maybe the code would be nicer if there was just like um, one method called label and then we did all of the within label did all of the necessary processing just with simple if statements so that's sort of moving away from an object oriented way of doing things as well Ah, oh, that yeah. Like so, so you, so you could, yeah. No, you, well, you could um, get rid of these overloads and just have multi-string. Uh, I mean, we could do that today. Like, uh, how does this? I can't remember how this works. Is that it? Is that it? I think that's it. I operator input. Yeah, I don't know. I'd have to look up the syntax for that. But yeah, we could do that uh, pretty trivially. And then, in fact, we could probably do that now and just get rid of these. Um, so anyway, let's. Um, that's sort of the discussion about where we might go with this. And I, I'm, the more I talk about it, the more I think that might be wise. Um, like, this has been a sort of a nice. Um, while this was simple, it was a nice um, way of structuring it. But now that it's we're wanting to grow it, we want to do it. Uh, in the best way possible and the simplest way possible so it's sort of this this theme of um, revisiting things so we'll start off our revisit yes exactly exactly so I mean this, this is and sort of um, the overarching um, theme here is you know is um, you want you want to you know make the code do something useful and simple and then you want to revisit it um and and revisit it early enough that you can completely restructure it without too much pain like there's only let's see line 888 uh to i mean line 100 so there's uh what's that that's uh, 700 lines of code which is actually quite a lot um it's more than I thought, but it's, I mean, it's not that much, like, um, 700 lines of code you can move around, you know, in a, in an hour or so, maybe two hours without too much hassle. So, uh, anyway, that's, that's the discussion, uh, portion. So what I want to do is hand over to you to do the actual restructuring just for this small section here. Um, and uh, one thing, and basically make it, you know, the nice 
green version rather than the red version is sort of where you want to go and whether you call it draw item or what have you or draw thing or whatever um, that will be up to you but um, <clears throat> one thing I did want to point out is now that we've got this um, uh, where are all my options gone? <laughs> oh dear what happened? <laughs> um, e yes, uh, Z is uh, the Queen's the Queen's English. I I, I used to say um, uh, Z in like primary school, and I got in a lot of trouble for it. It's like I've just been watching Sesame Street. There we go. All right. Okay. So uh, as yeah, as I was gonna say. Uh, the fact that we've got these, um, this little indentation here is kind of just a holdover from the way we were doing it before. So we could just get rid of most of draw items reason for existing if we like use a uh, overlay like we're doing here for selection or an underlay. So, and that's 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 the other thing is you know you always go back and reconsider these old design decisions. So I'm going to let you do some coding now. So what do you reckon we should do? Oh, you've got the code for that ready to go. Well, let's uh, let's do that. Just I mean, this is um So um, yeah, so that should uh, I just call it S. So just throw that together. Um, yeah, I, I I don't know. I just banged it in. Um, I kind of feel like you know these things should be near the constructors because they're they're sort of constructory. Um, so. In theory, I should now be able to get rid of these. Oh, it's implicit. It should, like, that's sort of the whole point. Uh, oh, it's inaccessible. Um... So you just got to change the access level of them as well, I think, and it works perfectly. So yeah, that's that's a one way to get rid of some uh, code. And uh, that's all right. Well, while you do that, just for anyone's interest who's um, playing along, yep, the call is exactly the same as far as the um, <clears throat> disassembly is concerned. So we'll, yeah, we'll worry about um, like this whole UI system, multiple class with inheritance and virtual calls and stuff. We'll worry about that uh, later. So let's focus on um, these ones. Yep, 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 yep. Well, I mean, <coughs> um, oh, okay. I was, yeah, I was, I was doing some coding on my laptop before and I'm like, F12 is in the wrong place. I need F12. Oh, good, good grief. 
Control B is usually like build in some versions. It used to be, I don't know. Sometimes Microsoft are like, no, we cannot change the keyboard shortcuts. And other times they're like, yeah, keyboard shortcuts. You know, let's have six different options. <coughs> so as you were saying, you know, we could just scoop out the contents of label and um, draw the thing. Well, yeah. Well, if if I I mean yeah, if I may, um, it is actually uh, not orthogonal drawing. It's um, <clears throat> it's this the layout. Uh, so I'm, I'm going to put it uh, above, and so. <laughs> this is this is my habit as a holdover from like doing C programming, and that is you know you things uh, lower in the program can't find anything, sorry things higher in the program can't see anything lower because it's all processed straight line rather than uh, multi pass compilation. So it's like all right, all the drawings stuff for drawing goes here, and then the stuff that calls it goes here, and that also encourages you to make this sort of um, I've called it leafy code, but it's sort of more, I guess, yeah, that's kind of, uh, root, given that I've drawn the arrows that way, but it's sort of also, uh, I don't know, it's leafy, let's say that. So um, yeah, I do. I, well, I do the opposite of what you have done there. Um, yeah, and I mean, it 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 makes a bit of sense because then you can actually like literally read the code, and it's like okay, you know, this thing calls this thing. Like so, it's like. Um, you, you introduce the things before you actually use them sort of in a narrative structure it also en ends up being like um, it works it ends up working nicely for fields as well it's like uh, particularly if you do uh, the thing like I don't like what Ethan does here it's like here's all the constants here's all the variables here's all the static variables like I, I want the current line to be listed you know above where it gets used if I like you know, occasionally I will want to know the data in a class. If it's like a particularly hot class, I'll stick it all together. But for some, for like logic and, and I, I, I don't know, like something that's not high performance or anything. Um, like if, I, if I'm not concerned about the size of this class, you know, I will distribute all of the fields next to the methods that use them. Because I mean, you can always use this thing to find the fields. Oh, this thing's great. Oh. Yeah. Hmm. Okay.
so um, one like <clears throat> one thing you could um, describe this as like you could rename it uh, would probably be a a first start because I mean I, I guess it does draw the item um, so so I'm just going to rename these as draw with carrot and then I'm going to rename uh, draw the thing uh, I guess we call it draw entry well we've, unfortunately we've used the name item for a, just a selectable item draw line draw line no line is um, yeah because line is like a, a line of like a, a two endpoints and a continuous fill between them um, so but the point is um, we could then consider you know do we want to keep this uh, carrot Um, I mean, okay, so one, one, th one thing that is interesting is that label could just call draw with carrot. So let's try that. Let's just bang him. So over here we've got our, you know, drawing utility. So already we're making the flow of this code nicer. Exactly. Exactly. So, uh, so label is never, ever, ever, ever going to get selected. There's no way to focus it. And so it's just going to go through draw with carrot and um, this is never going to trigger well now we are in a position where we can just inline all of this into draw entry which I think is probably the next step to take Does that, does that make sense? Are you, are you happy with, with that uh, plan? So I'm, I'm I'm not quite following you. Okay, so I I so that what I've done <clears throat> is I've made label call draw with carrot rather than calling uh, draw enter direct directly, and um, the reason that I've done that is because now all of our all of our things that draw a line into the menu call a single method and that way because they all call a single method and then all of these draw with carrots they call a single method we now have an opportunity to uh, get rid of the middle method um, if you like so uh, in a diagram um, now we have the situation where, it's, uh, let's see, uh, draw with with carrot, and that's all calling draw entry, and so 
aside from the fact there's multiple versions because it's got the annoying split out but this is going to solve that as well it's basically the case that you know this core here that can be um, uh, removed effectively so it's an opportunity to simplify the code flow by removing effectively like a node from this diagram Well, like, so, so, so the thought here is, um, you know, draw entry is adding on the, the hover handling. Um, whereas, um, draw with carrot is adding on the, the carrot for the, the focus handling. And so as just as the hover gets handled in here, there's no reason that focus could not also be handled in here, you see? So that's, yep. <coughs> well, uh, might I suggest doing it towards the top because, um, because you know this this functionality does occur before anything else in draw entry happens like effectively what we're doing is we're taking th rather than taking one method and just inlining it in here we're actually taking three methods and inlining it into here so it's a little little more complicated than a straight up um inline but um so i'm just gonna give this as a bit of a coding just simple coding challenge for you So, good, good start. Uh, we do need that. Good start. Yep. Definitely is. You're, oh, you've just dropped an if statement. Um, so, you yeah, this else statement is just needs to go away because you've uh, inverted. Yeah. So that's that's and and that's all exactly right.
Um, so, so the thing that we figured out last time was that this, uh, when we get text, if it's a string, and this is why this ended up so complicated, if it's a string, the working buffer isn't being used. If we get a string builder, that string builder could be the working buffer, in which case we have to handle it one way. Otherwise, we're free to use the work, free to use the working buffer, and we actually want to because we don't want to modify the user's text. Which, um, you know, if if we did this to something that isn't the working buffer, that might be a string builder that the uh, client code is using. So in the case that it's just a string, the working buffer is ours. It's not. Um, Yeah. We can we can now thanks to our new thing you can just do this. And in fact if I, I know you're not a huge fan of this particular way of coding, but uh, you can even do that if you look at what append returns Um, well, we don't have, we don't have, well, working buff is always a string builder anyway, but we don't have, um, a cast for text that will work, but we do have a uh, string builder as a property. So that looks pretty damn good to me. And everything still works on mine. Has, <laughs> has your Visual Studio slowed down again? Oh, that's tragic. <laughs> yeah. So um so that's pretty good. Like we you can even just see it cuz now there's all of this and and all of these 
fit on one screen, like almost fit on one screen. Certainly label, label and draw entry now fit on one screen. So we've like severely reduced the amount of code. Um, you know, we only have to actually look at this if update, uh, if, if focus is actually relevant. Um, you know, we insert the carrot as necessary. And then we just carry on with the rest of the drawing. Um, <clears throat> so there's that's I mean that's pretty much everything uh, that I wanted to cover. Is there anything else you wanted to look at before we wrap up? Uh, that's I mean like. <clears throat> For, for our purposes, we've got no reason. In fact, I'm almost tempted to just delete these to do's because for our purposes, like it's ugly as hell, like uh, final references, um, you know, people are reaching into that and being like, I want the font and uh, doing it. It would be nicer, say, to pass the font to the constructor of UI update, but then UI update gets instance like just straight here with a default constructor. So <coughs> that it's not hurting anything to have that happen because we know um, basically that the game class exists once per process and then load content gets called once per process so the fact that these variables are once per process is absolutely fine um, and it's just like it's just kind of it's just ugly like but it's it's I, it's, it's not even ugly, it's just not elegant. Let's put it that way. <clears throat> yes, eventually, like, I mean, so that's, that's the reason that you would change it, is like, oh, you want to use different fonts, you want multiple fonts. So once you reach that point, that's when you sort of go in and edit that. Uh, but for the time being, like, the fact that I can just right click on font and just go final. I want to, I want to do something interesting with font. So, you know, final references on font and it's like, all right, there's the handful of places that I need to fix up to make that happen. Um, so that's actually fine. I'm uh, not too concerned about that. This is, this is more concerning. Like if we were to fix anything, it probably would be the fact that, uh, if UI draw. Um, like maybe you would want to do this in a position where you're not generating garbage every frame. So I'm just going to move that into low content. Um, yeah, and I think that should be fine. Um, why can I not do that? Cannot implicitly convert. Oh yes, good catch. And I mean honestly, and then. Like if you were concerned, I mean, just just because UI draw works that way, you could do UI update equals new UI update font. So we could actually go ahead and just do that. Um, certainly that change, and, uh, and then you have to go in here and add the constructor, and then updates keeping copy the font around, and so then then that becomes the sort of thing you have to worry about. Like you can see that this becomes slightly interesting as far as um, the network problem goes and I feel like to really get a handle for this at some point we may have to actually do, uh, dip into the um, open source driver city code take out the um, uh, the um, testing stuff for uh, snapshotting so we can like take and load snapshots uh, and, and like pause the simulation and stuff so, uh, I mean, I mean, it, it, it's open sourced and we just, we probably would be well served to actually insert it into this project because it's not really that useful, like to be coding against some constraints that don't actually exist in this code. Um, like at some point, like you'd want to stop it being theoretical.
so I think I think that would be a, a thing to do as well. Um, so I think uh, no, I meant exactly exactly that. Uh, Oh, you yeah, made them locals. Yep. Yeah, whoops. <laughs> easy, easy mistake. Oh, well, it's good thing it's um, you know, a C sharp, a nice language that you know makes that sort of issue fairly easy to track. Like, I don't think I've ever had a serious bug caused by like doing that. I've found a bug. Have you, can you see the bug? <laughs> Just to have it. Do you have the same bug? Ah, oh, you still. Oh, you're going to get rid of white pixel as well. Why not? So I've actually uh, well, I mean, like font is one thing because that's always like eventually we might get to a chase place where that will change. But like white pixel, like we've just added a whole bunch of like I mean it's really trivial code and I'm not gonna not gonna undo it uh, at this point. But it's like it adds. You know, there's a white pixel here and a white pixel here and a white pixel here, and it really doesn't add anything. It's like, well, like the the nicer way to do that, in fact, um, is uh, uh, I, I'm not sure if I did this on River City or not, uh, but I, I do this all the time. Uh, basically. The resources.cs <coughs> and make it a static class and um, public static sprite font font public static white pixel uh, sorry text and it's it is identical to what we're doing here it's just um, it just collects them in another place and it just doesn't look as inelegant. Um, so, um, so I'm just going to leave that there, but I'm not going to make the, I'm going to, I'm going to wrap up before we make yet another change to that. Um, unless, unless, uh, unless you're actually, ah, uh, you've got an autocomplete issue. <laughs> That's right. Um, and certainly, um, you c you can see uh, the way that you have done it because you've got. In fact, I've got I've got pretty much the same thing. I just haven't done that um 
but um, sprite batch is like I usually wouldn't put sprite batch into here. I might for something really simple, because sprite batch is stateful. I'm really getting sick of sprite batch to be honest. Like I feel like it, like having something that is you know just a draw list would be so much nicer. Like, oh, you got it. All right, I, I, I almost forgot. Let's fix that bug before we wrap up. Um, that should be. Uh, yes. What are we doing wrong? Oh, we're pending. Oh, we're pending text. Yeah. So, uh, in both of these cases, what we want to do is actually because we know what text is, we can just. Um, Yes, so we should also we should also add, you know, uh, override to string, and then it's simply like you know, is string. Uh, so the I mean, you hope the compiler would inline the is string thing, but uh, it won't uh, in this case. Like this is just a, a stopgap thing. Um, so if if I cared about performance, which I really don't for this situation. Um, like I would be sticking, you know, debug dot assert false. Check it on the side, dude. So I'd I'd stick that in to say, okay, developer, this is your fallback, but I expect you to um, do it yourself. Although then that's going to trigger the flipping uh, debugger in. Um, <coughs> In, in your in your like um, uh, watch window and stuff I, can you get an assert in a watch window I don't know I can't remember string <laughs> yeah yeah it's life life just like almost it's almost a bit of a design flaw the fact that you have to do it this way but I mean I, I don't, can't think of a better way they could have really done it um, so yeah eh, anyway two string there is fine but cer certainly for our case we don't need to do the cast object and have um, have uh, the string builder over there do the virtual call for us um, so anyway that's all sorted now easy easy peasy <clears throat> all right so let's uh, wrap up. We've got, a, we've got a few interesting things to think about, and that is, uh, you know, fixing out these resources. Maybe we'll just do that as a quick warm up next time, and then we'll uh, start thinking about consolidating uh, UI system, UI update, and UI draw into like just one, one object, um, <clears throat> and see how that goes. Um, probably version control it before that, in, ca in case we don't like the result. All right. Uh, thanks for watching everyone and we'll see you next time.